Module two will cover ethanol and ethanol blended fuels. Upon completion of this module, participants should be able to describe the use of ethanol and ethanol blended fuels in the United States. Ethanol, what is the challenge? On May 14, 2007, a cargo tank truck carrying 8,000 gallons of ethanol overturned and burst into flames on an interstate in Baltimore, Maryland, killing the driver and sending a burning stream of ethanol into the street below, igniting a row of parked vehicles. On October 20, 2006, a train carrying 86 cars of ethanol derailed in New Brighton, Pennsylvania. 23 cars derailed and approximately 20 of those cars released product. Some of the rail tank cars went into a river while others burst into flames. On March 3, 2004, an ethanol bulk storage tank containing approximately 1.85 million gallons exploded and burned in Port Kembla, New South Wales, Australia. The explosion blew the roof of the tank 100 feet in the air and landed next to the tank, damaging firefighting equipment for the whole facility. The addition of ethanol to gasoline presents some unique firefighting challenges. Traditional methods of firefighting against hydrocarbon fires, such as gasoline, have been found to be ineffective against these polar solvent type fires, such as ethanol blended fuels. While gasoline will tend to float on top of water, ethanol blended fuels are water miscible and blend readily with the water. For this reason, the use of alcohol resistant aqueous film forming foam, ARAFFF, is recommended as a means of extinguishing an ethanol fire. Since the beginning of the 20th century, the U.S. and the world have become a motorized society. Most families either own an automobile or rely on motorized transportation on a daily basis. For the past 100 years, the primary automotive fuel has been a byproduct of crude oil. Opposite from the European community, which focused on diesel engines for light duty and passenger vehicles, the U.S. automobile industry has predominantly utilized gasoline-powered light-duty vehicles while heavier-duty or off-road larger vehicles and equipment generally use diesel. Both gasoline and diesel are hydrocarbons composed of hydrogen and carbon. They are derived from crude oil. The nature and characteristics of hydrocarbon fuels are familiar to virtually everyone involved in fire protection today since gasoline and diesel are so widely used and incidents are common occurrences. Notably, ethanol blended fuels are a substantial component of the U.S. motor fuel market. Today, ethanol is blended into nearly all unleaded gasoline and is sold year-round from coast to coast and border to border. Ethanol accounts for more than 10% of the U.S. gasoline pool and its use is expected to continue growing. Over 200 ethanol production facilities can be found across the country, with most located in the Midwest. The ethanol production facilities primarily use rail to bring their products to market. The transport of ethanol via rail tank cars has increased significantly over the past decade and is expected to continue to grow. Ethanol for use as a transportation fuel has been steadily growing since the 1980s. As production grew, ethanol was added to the gasoline supplies to replace octane enhancers like lead and MTBE as they were being removed from the gasoline supply due to toxicity concerns. The Clean Air Act of 1990 further increased the market share for ethanol blended fuel due to the mandated usage of oxygenated fuels in reformulated gasoline or RFG in certain areas of the U.S. to help reduce carbon monoxide emissions. RFG refers to extensive changes in gasoline properties that reduce emissions of volatile and toxic organic compounds in ozone non-attainment areas. Fuel oxygenates, such as ethanol, add chemical oxygen to the fuel, which promotes more complete combustion and thereby lowers carbon monoxide emissions. Hydrocarbon exhaust emissions are also often reduced. Today, ethanol is the most widely used oxygenate for RFG. 
Ethanol has a blending octane of 114 and is widely used by refiners to create regular octane gasoline from sub-octane based stocks or to raise regular octane fuels to the mid-octane level. This addition of ethanol to gasoline to boost octane is an alternative to more energy intensive refining operations, making ethanol one of the most cost effective octane enhancers available to the refiner and blender today. Mid-level ethanol blends like E20 and E40 can improve engine efficiency and reduce greenhouse gas emissions when used in new internal combustion engines, so demand for high octane ethanol will continue to grow. In 2011, the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA, approved E15, which is 15% ethanol, 85% gasoline, for use in model year 2001 or newer light duty cars, trucks, and SUVs, and in all flex fuel vehicles. Vehicles older than 2001, as well as small engines, boats, and motorcycles are not approved to use E15. Higher ethanol blended fuels are growing in use. A common example for this type of fuel is ethanol flex fuel, which is 51 to 85 percent ethanol by volume. EXX is commonly used to indicate the ethanol concentration. The XX is the percentage by volume of the ethanol in the fuel. E100 is produced and marketed as undenatured or neat beverage alcohol. Denatured fuel ethanol is ethanol that has been denatured with 2 to 5% of approved hydrocarbon, typically natural gasoline. This blend is also known as E95 to E98 or fuel alcohol. Denatured fuel ethanol is one of the top hazardous materials shipped by rail in the U.S. Ethanol blended fuels may include blends of gasoline and ethanol in any ratio. Presently, there are three common ethanol blended fuels, with E10 the most common. This is a blend of 10% ethanol and 90% gasoline and is found at all retail fueling stations. E15 is a blend of 15% ethanol and 85% gasoline can be sold year-round and its availability and use is expanding. You will also find ethanol flex fuels in the marketplace, which range from E51 to E85. This fuel is sold for use in flex fuel vehicles only. To summarize what we just learned, ethanol has been a common U.S. gasoline additive since the 1980s. However, its use has dramatically expanded since the mid-2000s. The U.S. ethanol production and use will continue to increase, and there will be an increase in transportation needs to bring this product to market.